I hope you're having a great day. Well, today I want to talk about the connection between your gut and your brain. What we need to understand today that for the longest time, you know, people, researchers, the medical community, all of these people have separated the physical body from the emotional self. And we've just seen disease spiral out of control and the statistics going higher and higher. Well, today, all that research is changing and the same community that proposed the same has now changed and we are understanding the connection between the brain and the gut, emotions and the gut, and between the gut and the brain. So technically what happens is if we take a simple emotion like anger, anxiety, sadness, happiness, every emotion has an impact on your gut. So you know, uh, parents, when your children sometimes complain about that stomach pain and they don't want to go to school, and most parents think it's just an excuse because they don't want to go to school, you know, when you further look into this, of course, sometimes children can be manipulative, but in most cases, if they have a stomach pain, it's because they have fear. And there's some fear that they have that they don't want to go to school. Could be bullying at school, could be an assignment that they have to submit, a teacher they don't like, or something like that. But that fear, whatever ha happens, expresses itself in the gut and your child feels sick. It's the same thing with most adults. When you go through anxiety, when you go through fear, you know, we have that saying that you feel butterflies in your stomach, you feel queasy. Some people, they need to run to the loo and pass emotion immediately. That's nothing but the gut and the brain connection. And what we need to understand that this is a serious thing because today, Day, a lot of brain problems are connected with the gut and you may try to keep train you know keep uh, treating the brain and everything related to that headaches migraines depression anxiety and all of that stuff and the problem could just be fixing the gut and vice versa versa sometimes you can have a problem with the brain and your uh, you may have the solution in the gut again like I said so how do we understand this so basically let's explain this the thought of eating food can stimulate gastric juices. So I always ask people to do the lemon exercise. So I tell people to close their eyes and imagine, deeply imagine that they're cutting a, sweet, a juicy sour lemon. Okay, now they're cutting that lemon with their imagination, their eyes are closed and then they're holding that lemon towards their tongue. Okay, in their imagination and most people would start producing saliva automatically. And because you produce saliva, that's a signal to your gastric juices to start production, which means your entire digestive system is also dependent on what is going on in your brain. So you think of a great food and you start feeling hungry in your gut immediately. Brain gut connection, it's real. Now, why is this important to us? Because for the longest time, we've just treated diabetes as sugar levels. Kidney problems, we look at the kidney. Heart, we just look at the heart. Liver, we just look at the liver. Without understanding that everything is interconnected in the human body and digestion, if we don't have proper digestion, nothing in our system works the right way. So if I'm looking at fixing my liver, if I'm looking at fixing a cancer, if I'm looking at fixing diabetes, I'm looking at fixing MS, anything, autoimmune condition, I first need to get my gut working the right way because it is through our digestion that we are able to break down the food that we eat, absorb the food that we eat, and that food that you absorb, the vitamins, minerals, is basically energy and raw material to every cell in your body. The cells in your kidney, your liver, your pancreas, your brain, your skin, your hair, so everything comes down to digestion. You could be having the best liver supplements, the best kidney supplements, doesn't matter. Will not work if your digestion is not good enough and strong enough to break down those supplements. Number one, break down and assimilate. Number two, absorb. And then you have to have the right blood circulation to carry all those nutrients to every cell in the body, which is why movement and exercise is so important for you. So this is real and what we need to understand is there are so many things to talk about the gut, but today I'm gonna to talk about anxiety because a lot of people from all over the world get in touch with us, come to see with us, they come to see us, they message us on Instagram. And you know, we finally come down to anxiety being the biggest cause of their gut issue or anxiety being the biggest cause of what's going on in their brain. And a lot of them are like, no, you know, they're looking for more complication. But if anxiety is the cause, then that's the ugly truth and we need to address anxiety. Just because we have anxiety, it doesn't mean, you know, that we have to live with it. Most people live with anxiety out of fear because the need to control certain things, the want to be in control, inability to deal with so much of chaos in, in life when your plate is too full. But we need to understand that anxiety and worry go hand in hand. And anxiety and worry never solves anyone's problems. You know, anxiety and worry cannot solve a problem. It is only an emotion that is born out of fear or the want to control. So if anxiety is the problem of most gut issues, so people come to us with a Crohn's disease, with an IBS disease, with a poor functioning gut, 
And sometimes you're diagnosed just down to being an anxious person. So then do you need more drugs? Do you need more nutrients? Do you need more vitamins? Or do you have to take care of the root cause, which is anxiety? Now coming to solution mode, what is the best way to control anxiety? We can meditate, we can do all of these things. Yes, that is a slow healing process, but the easiest way to confuse your body from anxiety, okay, you may have all the anxiety in your life right now, but the important thing is that your body doesn't feel anxiety because when it feels anxiety, your adrenal glands are producing more adrenaline, more cortisol, and this is the hormone that keeps you in the sympathetic nervous system, which is stress mode. And when you're in stress mode, you cannot digest your food, you cannot rest, you cannot sleep at night, you cannot be relaxed. So your body's always on the edge in the sympathetic nervous system and it comes with all the problems of high blood pressure, irregular blood sugar levels, you know, tension and all of these issues. So the quickest way, the quickest way to handle anxiety, okay, is through your breath, your breathing, okay? You'll find that when you're worried, when you're anxious, when you're highly stressed, that your breathing will get very shallow. That is how the body communicates with your nervous system to put you in stress mode. But the moment the breathing becomes more stable, which means your inhale and your exhale becomes longer, what happens is your body thinks that the stressful event is over and the cortisol, adrenaline, everything comes back down to normal. And that is the ideal state, which is the parasympathetic nervous system, where we should sleep, eat our food because we can digest and assimilate better. Our digestive system works better when our breathing is longer, when we're in a sympathetic nervous system. So if you are an anxious person, if you are going through stress, no matter what's going on in your life, if you can master the control over your breath. So for example, right now you may be in a meeting which is stressing you out, but if in that meeting you can listen and just focus on slowing down your inhales, lengthening your exhales, your cortisol levels are gonna come down. So you still have stress in your life, but your body is behaving differently because you changed your breath. So this is by far the simplest way to improve gut health, which is getting destroyed by anxiety. Of course, for all other gut health, because it's destroyed, you'll need prebiotics, your probiotics from natural foods or from supplements. First preference, natural foods. You will also have to change the way you eat, your timings, and all of those things. But today we're talking about the connection between anxiety and your gut and your brain. So for example, your gut also regulates your brain. So your gut has the biggest connection with anxiety and with depression. So if you have a poorly functioning gut, that could be the reason why you're going through depression. Okay, now you may say, no, but I have a depressing problem in my life. Yes, but it's more magnified because your gut regulates certain hormones in your brain. And because that regulation is not happening the right way, it is more amplified. That small problem, that small problem that is depressing you is now amplified because you don't have the right hormonal communication in your body. So yes, when there's someone going through depression, autism, any disease, the first thing you look at is the gut. And if someone's going through something in the gut, you try to fix that problem. Because if you have an unhealthy gut, your gut is your immune system. 80% of your gut or more of your immune system starts from your gut. So you have cancer, you have diabetes, you have colds and coughs frequently. The first thing you look is not at vitamin C. You look at your gut because you enable your gut. And if your gut is functioning the right way, it will automatically take care of your immune system, inflammation, and so many other things in the body. So please understand there is a connection between the gut and between your brain and between your brain and your gut, and they work with each other. So Crohn's, IBS, cramping, poor period cycles, hormonal disorders, all of these things, including weight gain. If you have a poor gut health, you will store more fat. Okay, if you have a pro microbiome, you will bloat up. You don't need more antacids to fix these problems. You need to sort out your entire gut. So number one, because there are so many things that you can do is anxiety, 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 because one in two people today are anxious. So anxiety, number one, remind yourself, anxiety is not solving anyone's problem. That's number one. So there's no benefit in that. Number two is how do you overcome it? With your meditation practice and with your deep breathing. Training your body to breathe. Training your body to breathe more and more will allow you to breathe even in the most stressful situation, a slow inhale and a slow exhale. So that keeps you in control and tells your body that it is not stressed. So your hormones and everything, your pressure, your blood sugar levels, everything else relaxes. So work on your breathing and that's why we encourage people to do your deep breathing. You don't wanna meditate, that's fine, but do your deep breathing practice every day. Five minutes in the morning is good enough. You'll fall in love with it. It's like a drug, you'll get addicted to it. It'll become 10 minutes, it'll become 15 minutes. In the night, before you sleep, disconnect your brain from the day. How do you do that? 
Deep breathing, send a signal to your mind that everything, your body, that everything is fine. Move from sympathetic to parasympathetic. So when you're stressed, never eat your food. Don't eat, wait till you calm down. What's the easiest way to calm down? One or two minutes of deep breathing, then eat your meal. Because if you're eating when you're stressed, you're not doing any justice to the food. You're not breaking it down, you're not absorbing it, you're producing more acids, everything's a mess. So calm down and eat, which is why we say, make your meal time sacred for you. Your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner, no phones, no gadgets, no difficult conversations, fun times, family time, whatever, or just eat by yourself. Feed your body, respect your body, give every cell the nutrition it needs, the energy it needs so your body can look after you. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.